thalidomide, nine things you didn't know about the poisonous pill. Now, uh, <laughs> let's pronounce this thalidomide, and then I said thalidomide, and then I said, wait, thalidomide, thalidomide, it rolls off the tongue. But I'm from Maine, man, and us Mainers, we don't pronounce things the way you normal folks do, right? <laughs> Why am I reading this article? Because uh, it came across my LinkedIn feed, and I know the first thing about thalidomide, and I don't know anything about it other than what I've just read here, but I thought it interesting to share with you. Just trust the authorities. Trust the CDC. Trust the authorities. Uh, here's Dr. Judith Johnson. She's an HCPC registered clinical psychologist and lecturer at the University of Leeds. All right. Uh, she focuses on psychological well-being and combo communications for you non-military folks. Thalidomide was marketed to pregnant women as an antidote for morning sickness in the late 1950s, but the results were calamitous. An epidemic of babies born with various disabilities, including limb, organ, and neural damage, led to withdrawal from sale in November 1961. There were over 5,000 known thalidomide survivors living worldwide in 2003, including 500 in the U.K., as a healthcare researcher, I'd come to understand the thalidomide catastrophe as a systems failure. The disastrous outcome is an inadequate, the disastrous outcome of an inadequate medications and approval process. My dad, Dr. Martin Johnson, was director of UK Thalidomide Trust between 2014. And through him, I'd come to learn about his terrible impacts upon individuals and their families. I used to talk to my wife about this, and uh, she had major morning after morning sickness after we had uh, when she was pregnant with Chloe. And they gave her something to help relieve it. She still doesn't know if that might have caused Chloe's ventricular tachycardia or not. She doesn't know. But the doctors know, Josh. They know. No, they don't, man. I, I hear this all the time. Your primary care physician or your pediatrician, whatever you want to say, as if they have time to study vaccines, all the medication they're putting, they're recommending. They don't have time. They're seeing 50,000 people a day at 10 to 50 minute clips. They stay up all night doing all their freaking paperwork after that. And I love my doctor. Love her. Dr. Carpinetti here in uh, Alfreda, Georgia. Big fan, first time, long time. Uh, there's no way she can study the, do the exhaustive, exhaustive research on whether or not the crap, you know, again, she's not a pediatrician. She's my primary care. Is good for me now. No way. She's just going off what the authorities tell her. There's no way your doctor, pediatrician specifically, can know all the stuff that they're recommending, the CDC's recommending you put in your body. There's no way. They don't have time for all that crap. Just, uh, don't tell me. Uh, the doctor would, would know. No, they don't. All right, so my dad, was saying, I, I also understood that many survivors were still waiting justice. Huh, kind of like the same thing in the U.S. of A. However, in 2018, together with his co-authors, dad published the thalidomide catastrophe, the first and only comprehensive look at thalidomide. Reading it led me to realize I've been seeing through a glass darkly. When laid bare, the thalidomide story is stunning, shocking, and almost unbelievable. Here are the nine things I learned from my dad's book. The full number of people affected by the drug reached tens of thousands. But they have the V-A-E-R-S. Yeah, trust me. You ask any pediatrician if they know what the hell that is. Uh, I don't think so. It is well known that thalidomide caused babies to be born with disabilities. However, it is highly likely that many other children died in the days and months after birth and even more were miscarried because of it. Johnson, Stokes, and Arndt estimated altogether between 87,000 and 270,000 babies were affected. But you're not going to hear about these people because they didn't fall under the metrics of our version of VAERS. If you're familiar with that, was that VAERS? A single tablet had disastrous effects. Research have been able to link the days on which tablets were taken with specific forms of damage. For example, a tablet taken on days 21 and 22 after conception could cause damage to or loss of the eyes. A tablet on day 24 could cause loss of arms, and a tablet on day 29 could cause loss of legs. The key message is from this that the babies who survived thalidomide were those whose mothers took a tiny amount of the poisonous pill. Key players in the development of the thalidomide are linked to the Nazis. Shocking. The book explores this issue in meticulous depth and is hard to summarize the evidence briefly. However, two things are clear. The first that chief scientist Chimi Grunenthal, the German company who patented the drug, or the chief scientist of Chimi Grunenthal, the German uh, company who patented the drug was Dr. Heinrich Muchter. He spent World War II at an institution which tested drugs on Buchenwald concentration camp prisoners. The second is that Otto Ambrose was a consultant for the distillers company, the British organization which distributed 
the U, uh, thalamidide uh, throughout the UK. Ambrose was second sentenced to eight years for his war crimes during World War II, which included using slave labor from the Auschwitz Monowitz concentrated camp. Thalidomide seriously harmed adults too. When taken for more than two weeks, it could cause adults to contract polyneuritis, nerve damage involving systems such as tingling, numbness, excruciating muscle cramping, and even partial paralysis. It could affect coordination, balance, and the uh, and the ability to walk. Altogether, around a half million adults were probably affected. The thalidomide catastrophe provides a response from Chimi Grunthal to one affected surgeon who used the drug. Thank you for your letter on 8th March of 1960, in which he tells you're increasingly suffering from parathesisia and probably polyneuritis. We wish to advise you that we have received no such reports to date. This letter was a lie. The company had received several reports and false reassurance may have caused the surgeon to keep taking the drug. As Johnson, Arntz, and Stokes commented, these uh, effects probably cost the surgeon his career. Warnings the drug was dangerous was ignored. To date, this company claimed that they could not have known about the harmful potential of thalidomide. The evidence presented by the, uh, the doctors make this almost impossible to believe. For example, there's clear evidence that the chief scientist, Mukter, received warnings a year before thalidomide even went to market from Dr. Pienza, an Italian doctor who undertook trials of the drug. Writing in 1956, Piacenza reported that the drug was unsuitable due to its toxicity. Tox, toxicity. He described uh, side effects in which adult patients, which included a whole body rash and peripheral nerve damage. Reports from concerned physicians continued to be sent to the company, but the drug was not removed from the market. <sighs> Even when its impact was known, the company continued to sell it. There were warnings that thalidomide was harmful before it even went to the market. However, the company did not publicly acknowledge its harmful potential until 1961. In a speech on 14 July that year, uh, the doctor, if I were a doctor, I would not prescribe uh, the name, the trade name for thalidomide anymore. Gentlemen, I warn you, I see great danger to see that in 1961. Yet he didn't withdraw the drug from sale until November that year. And he said this in July. If he had pulled it immediately after his speech, more than 25% of the affected babies would not have been, would have been saved. The impacts of thalidomide are sometimes invisible, you think? Not all survivors were affected by the limb damage, which is characteristic of it. As a toxic nerve agent, it's also called devastating hidden damage. Uh, the doctors report the situation Julie Lane, whose mother had been supplied with a drug. Outwardly, she only had minor hand damage. However, at a young age, she developed ep epileptic fits. In her teens, she lost the use of her legs and later on her arms. She also gradually lost her hearing and sight. As her epileptic brain activity was not typical, her symptoms were misdiagnosed as being psychosomatic, not of a physical origin. That caused her problems to be stigmatized. However, a post-mortem conducted after she died at the age of 44 showed evidence of major internal damage, which had been there since birth. Is that known as Tina Gallagher? Okay. Uh, survivors still wait for justice. The company which patented thalidomide has never been held to account. Shocking. Almost like some companies today. A trial was called in 1968, but later suspended, apparently on the basis that public interest in a continuation of the criminal prosecution never doesn't exist any longer. In the UK, distillers, the company which distributed the drug, paid out compensation following a lengthy legal battle. However, survivors in some other countries have never received compensation. Some countries protected their populations from the thalidomide. Several countries, which include uh, Turkey, Ger East Germany, the USA, and France. In Turkey, Dr. Agun undertook tests involving tissue cultures, including it was unsafe. In East Germany, the commies. The relevant officials had concern based simply on the information supplied in the, pa in the patent. They noted that due to the structure of the molecule on an embryo toxic effect was possible. They refused the license. Dr. Francis Kelsey resisted significant pressure from the prospective American licensee company, Richardson Merrill, and managed to delay the approval of the drug until it was removed from sale in, 1890, in 1961. Her delay meant that only about 160 babies are estimated have been affected by thalidomide in the U.S. What a freaking hero. What these countries show is that toxic properties of thalidomide were possible to identify using the technologies and process at the time. Those governments which failed to prevent the distribution are partly to blame for the disaster and should be held to account. You freaking A right, man. In 2019, the generation of thalidomide survivors is turning 60. What the thalidomide catastrophe makes clear is the international sale of the drug was preventable. 
has Risha been identified by the company which patented the drug, those which distributed it, and the governments which allowed its sales? The damage was initially caused by, uh, has been extended over six decades by failure to acknowledge and apologize for the harm it caused. Ah, oh, you friggin', you, oh, I'm so angry by this stuff. Let's see, Francis Kelly, what? Thank the good Lord, man. Anyway. But there's nothing to see here. We're all protected by the authorities. 